Welcome to a demonstration of the installation process for the Hitachi Advanced Modular Storage. Hitachi Data Systems breaks new ground in operational efficiency with the introduction of the Hitachi Adaptable Modular Storage 2000 family. The Hitachi Adaptable Modular Storage 2000 family utilizes Hitachi Dynamic Load Balancing Controller active-active internal clustering. This new architecture eliminates the need to define and manage preferred paths and the costs that go with it. In addition, it includes easy installing, non-disruptive microcode update processes and data traffic routing that automatically bypass a controller that is down for either a planned or unplanned outage. The installation of the Hitachi Advanced Modular Storage 2300 is accomplished by the use of two short, easy-to-use wizards. The first is used to discover the units being installed, and the second is used to set them up to be used. After logging on to Hitachi Storage Navigator Modular 2, we simply start the first wizard by selecting the Add Array button. This action brings up the wizard's introductory screen, where we are shown the easy steps required to discover our new 2300. There are two ways we can find the Hitachi Adaptable Modular Storage 2300 arrays. First, if we know the IP address of each of the storage controllers, we just need to specify them. Or second, we can specify a range of IP addresses, and it will be scanned for the storage controllers. In our case, we will specify a range we know that can be used to find the new controller. We click on Next to go to the next step of the process. As you can see, the discovery process is searching the IP address range we supplied and has now returned the results. This completes the discovery process, so we click on Next to continue so that our new storage array can be added to our list of known arrays. We will now click on the Subsystem Hotlink to access the storage controller. Since this is the first time accessing this new 2300, we click on the Initial Setup Wizard Hotlink. Once again, we are presented with an introduction screen that describes the steps the wizard will take us through to accomplish our task. Click on Next to continue the process. First step in the setup, we are given the option to set up email alerts notifications for error conditions that may occur. We specify the domain name and identify the email server that will be used. Since this is our second 2300 controller to be installed, we will give it a nickname that can be used to best identify it when notifications are sent out. We now provide a list of recipients that will receive the alerts. Clicking Next takes us to the step which allows us to change the management IP address to the storage controllers, or we can use DHCP to assign the addresses automatically. We will set our 2300's IP address manually. Each controller is assigned a new IP address and can be directed to which LAN data speed to use. We will allow the controller to auto-negotiate the data speed. Clicking Next, we proceed to the next step in the process. Here we see the eight fiber channel ports on our 2300 and the configuration variables that we can set. We can set the fiber channel port address along with specifying its data transfer rate, or once again allowing it to auto-detect the rate. We can also specify loop if we are direct attached. But in our case, we're using a fabric, so we will specify point-to-point. Point. Once we are satisfied with the way all the ports are set up, we click Next to continue. Here, we can specify drives that will be used as roaming hot spares. We will just need one, and then we will continue with the setup process. We are coming near the end of our setup process. We have just one more decision to make. Should we allow the subsystem to set its internal time automatically, or manually, or not at all? Set automatically is the one we will choose to use. Clicking on Next sends us to the final screens, where we approve the changes we made to the email alert notification window, 
the Management Ports window, the Host Ports window, the Spare Drive window, and the Date and Time window. So we now confirm those changes and this finishes the initial setup wizard. We are now logged out of the subsystem. We can return to the new subsystem by simply clicking the hotlink for the subsystem as we did initially. This concludes our walkthrough of the discovery and initial setup of the Hitachi Adaptable Modular Storage 2000 Family Subsystem. As we have shown, it is accomplished through the use of an easy step-by-step -step wizard that guides you through a brief process that takes only minutes to complete. If you would like to find out more about the Hitachi Adaptable Modular Storage 2000 family and the benefits it can bring to your business, please contact your local Hitachi Data Systems representative or channel partner, or visit our website at www.hds.com. Thank you.